This morning, I'm sharing a few thoughts on change your face. <laughs> Tell somebody, change your face. Why are you laughing? Change, 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 change your face. <laughs> Are we together? Look at the person's face. Look, look at somebody's face, and say, "Tell the person that when you say you are and you say no." Change is to make or become different. My friend Emmanuel, change your face. Do I better be traveling photo? My friend, go and sit at the back and try yourself photo. <laughs> change is to make or become different. It's to take or use another instead. As I share on this message of change, I pray that it will happen. When we talk of a face, normal biological explanation will be that portion of the body where your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, that's how the dictionary defines it. But I'm looking beyond that. When we say the face of an organization, the face of a person, we are talking about the person's appearance, the, the person's glow, the, the person's bliss, the things that mark him or her, that brings the differentiation, that makes the person unique. That brand, that thing that identifies you, that makes you that great person that God wants you to be. And today I'm saying that whatever face you carry, there shall be a change. You know, in nature, change is inevitable. There are certain aspects of God's creation that will never change. Something like the force of gravity until Jesus comes, whatever goes up, no matter how long it stays, it will come down. We will continue to breathe out carbon dioxide and take in oxygen. Those things will not change. And so there are certain things about our lives that must not change. And by divine authority, I proclaim over your life that those things will never change. Your integrity will not change. Your purity will not change. Your name will remain pure and safe and sound. Your foundations will remain on the rock of our salvation. The great king, the great I am. You will be immovable. Those things will not change. But you see, there are other things that in God's own creation must change. And when that, those kinds of changes are fought, you will break your leg. Can you imagine a child that has been born? Once they are born, the first thing is that you don't care. You can leave the child on your bed for no matter how long. It will, he or she will lie at the same place. After a few weeks and months, you do that at your own risk. By the time you come, that child may be somewhere else. Changes begin to take place. And as those changes come, a time will come when that child will begin to speak. And I have a lovely girl here who calls me Uncle Ofofo. Uncle Ofofo. Not Osofo, Ofofo. And I'm excited to hear that child called me Uncle Ofofo. But who will be tired that child if after 20 years she sees me and calls me uncle or fofo. Then there is times of uncle or fofo are dead and gone in your life. When the time is out for you to begin to crawl and you fail to crawl you are still seated. There's a challenge. 
Today's uncle of off where time will come when this same child will begin to say some panchanga de BFA near this can oil. So quite chian co gua no mumade oboko. Begin to say bears of the same feathers will flock together. The language has changed. There is a change. When that change does not take place, there is a challenge. And this morning, may God bring the change that you need in your life. Areas that must change should change. So when the time for change comes and you refuse to change, you become disabled, incapacitated. There are seasons and moments in life that comes when there, is, there are periods of raining season. Even plants know that in those moments they need to blossom and come out more leaves. And times may come when it is either winter or dry season and the leaves themselves, the trees know that it is time to shed off. When those periods come and instead of shedding off, they begin to grow more leaves. It is to their own peril. And so as believers and as a church, we must know when we must flow with the change. When change is coming and you resist it, you do it at your own peril. When change begins to appear and you go along it, life becomes easier. There are seasons and times. We must come along those lines. So I was, there was something that I saw that made me so sad. Ah, I saw on one of the platforms, let me just digress a bit, that some of us were busily arguing about some old things that we've gone beyond. The scripture I read said, and that is my main focus for today, forget the former things. There are certain things that we held on to. There are certain teachings that we taught in this church. There are, there are certain things that we believe. When time comes for us to change, you better change. And stop holding on to those things. And I'm going to, this one is not God who spoke to me. I, I saw it, so I'm going to address it. I didn't talk because I knew I will have the opportunity. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. Just a, a, a quick digression. And the, the argument on, on PIWC platform was that, uh, and the people were so angry that women are wearing trousers. And I said, Nebri, how? Pia here in this, not, not PIWC for young culture, PIWC Koko Memli. But anyway, it's, it's in the Bible. So Deuteronomy 22 5 says, A woman must not wear men's clothing, period. This was no argument. True or false? Uh, nor a man wear women's clothing. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does that. This one, you don't have to argue. Bible, God says, men, don't wear women dress. Women, don't wear men dress. So all the women who are wearing trousers here. Oh, Jim. Yes, it's, it's here in the Bible. God says, a woman must not wear a man's clothing. Nor a man wear a woman's clothing. Period. Don't argue. Let's read the verse 1. Same God speaking. If you see a fellow's ox or sheep straying, do not ignore it, but be sure to take it back to his owner. So PRWC members, men should not wear women's dress. Women should not wear men's dress. When you see somebody's sheep on the road, take it and look for the owner. Same God. If you see somebody's sheep straying and you ignore it, or jam. Same God, same Holy Ghost speaking. Let's come to verse 9. Do not plant two kinds of seeds in your vineyard. So those of you who, who farm and put maize and cassava together. Oh, Jim! Same God. Don't men should not wear women dress. Women don't wear trousers. And God is saying that, yes, women should not wear trousers. You too. Don't plant maize and cassava. How many of you have planted maize and cassava before? Or yam and coconut? Maize crop. How many of you? Raise your hand. Please stand up. Please stand up. 
Please stand up. All of you. Let's come to verse 11. Same Deuteronomy 22. Same God. Same scripture. And PRWC, we are arguing about this. Do not wear clothes of wool and linen waving together. Those of you who shed are 20% cotton, 50% linen. If you have ever wore a shirt or a suit which is 60% woolen and linen, stand up. All the women who have ever worn lace or can taste, stand up. Please, I'm serious. If you are, no, please, I, I mean it. I, I'm not joking. If you have ever worn 20% dress, shirt, and the shirt, they've started 50%. You know, well, you know what I mean? Or a suit. Those of you seated, you've never worn kente, never worn lace. If you have ever worn a lace or a kente or a bubu with embroidery on your neck, get up! All of you, I rest my case. These teachings should not be heard among people like PRWC. Look, if you have some nice trousers, make a message. The men shared here, and they also men you have bro. What what really was God saying? God was saying that I am the Jehovah, the one and only God. Worship me alone. No syncretism, no lukewarmness. You either hot or hot. The Lord your God will not tolerate idolatry mixture. It's not about trousers. It's not about shoes and those things. Please. So those things going on on the platform. Stop. Souls are dying, people are perishing, and you are thinking about this. Look into the face of somebody and say, Oh, now, show on Atarian Cochino. Cochino. So, please, that is on the side. I'm, I'm not telling you to go and wear trousers by force, but me, Usha, make us here. I'm a Name Usha, and Barrier. I mean, I, I, I don't want to even go into some more areas. But let me say this. We must forget certain things. Yeah, let me, you see, uh, <laughs> uh, three occasions here in this church. Three. I can remember at least three. Ah. Somebody comes to stand here. Three different people. Two, two men, one lady. So I know what I'm talking about. Comes to stand here and say that, ah, PRWC, that's not me. We should sing English. We should sing Chi. We should sing Ghana. We are Ghana. I don't have a problem with those comments. But then some of you begin to clap. No, my And you are clapping because they say we should sing Chi. Let me ask you, have I ever stood here to say nobody should sing Chi? Makabida. No, answer me. Have I ever said nobody should sing tree in this church? So what, what are you clapping for? Now listen and listen carefully. I'm talking about change. And I'm saying this under authority. You better listen. As far as I remain the pastor of this church, girls must feel comfortable here. Everyone must feel comfortable I am a proud Akan. Me. I am from the best region in Ghana, which is what? Yes. Yes. If you are not from Western region, you need to come to us for the best. All other regions are just an afterthought. I'm a proud Akan. But let me say this. Pentecostalism or Holy Ghostism 
It's not a canism. Now listen. Look. Oh no, Kupone! Wuni! Yamuafu! Kasi minyamye! Hallelujah! Ah, Safu! Ye, 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 this one, you call this Pentecostalism. This one is a bibinum. I'm on fire now, see my name, and I'm on fire now, you know, and I'm here. And I'm on, and I'm on, and I'm on. And when the Holy Ghost baptized us, we converted that thing into the Spirit, and we said that is Holy Ghost. I have bibinum, and I have a bibinum, and I have a Holy Ghost. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This one is high life. High life. It is our own culture that we are brought into the church. God loves our culture. But don't let us equate that to Pentecostalism. It has, look, culture is neutral. I know there are some of you that if anybody dares come and sing here, Come and stand here and begin to say, Woo yo, woo yo, woo yo, hey, Panda, Father, Holy Ghost of Fire. You say, hey, 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 hey. Reggae in, 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 in Church of Pentecost, reggae. Reggae is for Bob Mali. Your mentality needs change. Change your face. Look. I want to see a time when we come to church, the Ebers, you bring your, what do you call it? Your, and let's enjoy the flavor. God loves it. God is not an Akan. And I'm saying that I am a proud Akan. That is Kwesim Requism, not Holy Ghostism. Now listen and listen to me. As I speak, as a pastor, I am conscious that I'm not addressing only those of you here. How many are you? Not even up to 2,000. Yesterday I attempted to check on our Facebook pages and the people we reach. At a service reach over 2,600 people. It means that those we reach are more than those in this auditorium. I'm looking and I'm seeing it to my eyes where a time will come where in this church, PIWC, when somebody is in the U.S. and comes to Ghana and wants a place that he or she will feel at home, he will go to a church where they are global-minded. Listen to me. We have hundreds of local assemblies meeting the needs of Ghanaians. All over. When you come to this place, Hundreds and thousands of them. We have, in addition to the local assemblies, English assemblies all over the place who are in to satisfy the needs of the Ghanaian community and, the, and even those ones, the English is Angli, Anglican, Angli, Angli, Akan. Even the English songs, we sing it. The Lord is good, yeah, 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 yeah. He has done so much for me. Whoa. It's, so, it's, it's English, but it's chi. Chi English. Now, all these, by the grace of God and by the leadership of the church, are available to satisfy the Akan and Ghanaian community. Only one PIWC. One. Out of the thousands that God has set aside. To meet the needs of the world. That one, we want to organize it. Uh, why? Why? And I'm saying that, let the whole world hear this. Church of Pentecost is not for Ghanaians alone. And until we begin to build a mission mindedness and consciousness, God 
will not give us some grace and some grounds. Because he knows, and I said it here, he knows when he brings them, we'll kill them. We are too self-centered. And that is why Paul had a problem with Peter. All the local assemblies like Peter have been called to minister to the Jews. PRWCs like Paul have been called to minister to the Gentiles. We dare not miss it. And I challenge any other thought against this. I know that this is the mindset of the executive, the mindset of the founding fathers of PRWC. This place must be a place where we will sing cheese. Hey, hallelujah. But in addition to that, some of you have watched too. And I will say it, I will say it until you change. When we sing, yeah, 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 do, then you are coming to give offering. Then you are dancing. Immediately we sing, I am a friend of God. Then you stand there. <laughs> my friend, look into the face of somebody and say, change. You will not. Sure. We must change the face of this church. When you go to Australia and you don't know Church of Pentecost, when you go to Australia and you are looking for a church, which church will you think about? Just tell me, what church comes into mind? Here's some. They are becoming effective and, and useful in their generation there. When you come to Ghana and you are not a Ghanaian and you are looking for a church, which church will you hear? Which church will you hear? Will you hear Wyatt? Or Coco Memle Assembly? Is that the kind of church you want to build? Is that what we want to do? To be relevant only in Coco Memle? Do you know the thousands of people who are out there listening to us? And let the church of Pentecost and all of us hear this. God has called us to be missionaries to the whole world. And so those of you who think that we must make this church only a canise and high life and chi, then there will be revival here. The church is not about music. It's about culture. It's about mentality. It's about our mindset. And I'm saying that that Ghanaian mentality and mindset must change. And let the whole church of Pentecost, those in America, those in Ukraine, those in Azerbaijan, understand that God has called us to the millions and billions of the world. Yes. And as we are doing, I will satisfy the needs of the Ghanaian community out there. But there are billions Last time I told you that Ghanaians were a drop in the ocean. So may the spirit of understanding flow into the mind of presiding elders across the globe, pastors across, across the globe, heads across the globe. Let the whole world hear this. That behold, God is doing a new thing. He's building a glorious, honorable church. A church that is appealing to everybody. Change this local mindset. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Forget about the past. So listen, and I know one of our problems. Rabbis, you, you don't like singing the theme songs. Tell them, repent. They should repent. You should repent more. You see, these are our own songs that have been birthed. But you see, God is not only going to use the theme songs. God is not only going to use Church of Pentecost made songs in PIWC. PIWC has been called by God. I'm saying this under authority. We have been called by God to reach out to the Indians, to the Chinese. So I'm saying that when a Nigerian come here, he or she must feel that this is his church. Those watching, somebody watching me from India, from Ukraine, now as I speak, must see our singing, our prayer, our consciousness, our mindset to be a place where when he comes, I want a place I can feel at home. They will come and feel at home. At this morning when I came, we sang four, five songs continuous. Chi, 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 chi. And then I'm going to say no. So when an Indian is watching, you will feel like a stranger. 
Remember that whatever we do, we are on a global front. Look into the face of somebody and say, when you look boy, catch them. So I'm saying that as PRWC, things must begin to change. Our mentality, our prayer, our thinking must begin to change. God is saying that we should not emphasize the old things. There's, look, mediocrity must change from this church. We must change the face of this church. I called President Ed and I told him that we don't want to see any cables in fact, this last time I almost tripped at the the launch. There was one launch we did here. Permem Permem did a joint, and there was this cable, and I, I almost tripped over. What, what is that? Here, modern PI. If I had fallen down, you say it's the Holy Ghost. You say Holy Ghost. Ahuma, ahuma na tripo me. These things must change. The face of the church must change. Our ushering must change. Royal versus you are a wonderful group. Everybody point your hand towards Royal versus and say, Monya Misha de Ntia Moka, Namobre. How many of us, after Royal versus minister, we ever go to them and say, Ah, Nya Misha de Ntia Moka, my dear papa. From the church. Um, <laughs> you see, I'm expecting that God will bring changes in mindset, changes in heart, changes in thinking, changes in the way we do. Forget about the former things. The way we used to do things must change in this church, including what we did yesterday. God seems to be lamenting that have you, can't you see it there's a change can't you appreciate it and that is how i feel when god is moving in a particular direction when there is excellence when god is cause, calling for a transformation and people are still stuck god begins to lament that can't you see what i'm doing church can't you see god is moving across the globe can't you see what God is doing across the globe? Can't you feel it? Do not dwell on the past. Do not live yesterday's life today. Neither should you take today's life into tomorrow. No. You see, when you are so locked up by your past, your foundation is weak. Because your past is made of straw and gold hey everything brings together your past and so when there's too much dwelling on the past your anchor will not hold if there's anything we need to dwell on is on the lord the rock of our salvation after what mccune did after what pencil did after what one 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 did those things god used them within their own time to meet a particular need if God wanted those practices and those systems and those strategies to be maintained today, he would have kept them alive. And if we still need to use their methodology for today, then God is such a powerless God that he cannot take advantage of people's culture, people's way of things and make his will known. He must always rely on the past. God is bigger than that. In fact, by biblical standard, God works progressively. God never goes back. And that's why he says, in fact, the, the, he, he, he says it very clearly that forget about the past. The past is only supposed to be a reference point, not a foundation. The only foundation of the church is Jesus Christ. We must begin to understand that God is able to use the apostles of today, the pastors of today, the elders of today, the deacons of today, the royal verses of today to do what he wants to do. And that mentality that thinking that that kind of worship is the best must change. And believe that you have been called for today. Hallelujah. It must change. And so, you know, 
Let me repeat this. If you build your life on your past, the reality is that it blesses your vision for tomorrow. It blesses it. It does not allow you to release your potential to meet the challenges of tomorrow because yesterday's methodology can never satisfy today's world or tomorrow. Can you imagine if those of you here are so fixated with typewriter, papa, 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 queen, papa, 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 queen. And that is what some of us are doing spiritually. We are still doing papa, papa, queen. When God, even children are using iPhones and touch phones, you at this age, and you're what? We are born before computer. But if you were born before computer, don't stop those of us who are born within the computer age. If we hold on to the past, it will cripple us. It will become a red light to our drive for progress. It will stop us. And I'm saying under authority that PIWC, let our mindset change. Let us come into this church with confidence, with boldness. If, look, God is here. Oh, I know God is here. And let's begin to change our mentality and think. stop thinking that God is someone unless we travel somewhere. I know God is here. He's doing a new thing. And he says that he's going to bring newness and freshness in life. I'm preparing this ground because God is about to raise some of you to do extraordinary things. Things of excellence. And we must be prepared to receive those those things that may appear different or new. If I had time, I would have taken us through history. Some of the things that some of us fought as youth director. Which were never understood. 18 years, 17 years ago, it was resisted. Now, it came nothing in here. Can give you countless numbers of them. And for how long shall we continue to do this? For how long shall we live yesterday's life today? Change. Let us change the face of this church. Let's bring newness and freshness in the modus operandi of this church to bring in excellence. God says that I will make a way in the wilderness. And th- listen, wilderness is a place that is uncultivated. An abandoned place. A place that is full of wild animals and trees. A place that there seems to be no way. But that is the beauty of God. God says that even in the wilderness, when I begin to do a new thing, I will make a way there. And so the things that you you think are impossible are the very things that God will make a way. Look, believe you me, if you are not careful. I think I, I shared here before Apostle uh, Jimmy Markin's testimony when he went for a conference and he saw somebody with a rasta. And as, as he worshipped and he prayed, he, he would look at the rasta man. And, and in his mind, he judged, you know, was a Not knowing that that man was a priest, was a minister. And that where he comes from, when you were a rasta, you are like a king. Church, if you don't change your mindset, and don't change the way you see things. God will leave you behind. I'm saying this under authority. And so he says that I'll make a way in the wilderness. Certain things that have been neglected. Just, <clears throat> how many of you, just teasing your mind, will be happy, will be excited, to right now if I call Shatawale. And say, Shatawale, come, come. Those of you who know Shatawale, go and tell him next Sunday you should come to church. Come. And let's, I call Shatawale in front and I give him the mic. Sing. Sing. Jesus is the winner. Man. Sing that song. How many of you will listen? You won't listen. Because you have a picture of him, but you can be shocked how God can use some of these people we do not value. It's people who are look like wilderness. People who look like uncultivated lands to establish his kingdom to the shame of the sanctimonious Pharisees. Because we think that God must have a particular way of doing this. So, hear me church, the things that have been abandoned in your life, God will bring life to it. And I'm saying this not only from the church perspective. I want to open your understanding so I begin to think wide. 
Because sometimes we are so narrow-minded, so single-focused, that even when God is turning our hearts to something different from what we are used to, in business, at your workplace, in relationships, in marriage, we are so stuck. Today, God is saying that he will make a way in the wilderness. So, whatever your situation is, may there be a prophetic declaration that those things that have been abandoned, God will bring fruitfulness and usefulness in it. Somebody has become rich in this country because of Bola, true or false? How many of us ever thought that Bola will bring money? May the things that have been abandoned, that have become wilderness, find a way for you. As you lie down, may God begin to cause you to think beyond the boss. Give you ideas nobody has even thought of in this country. Give you plans and strategies nobody has imagined. And those things that have been abandoned, can you imagine if God gives you a dream on street kids? Can you imagine if God gives you a dream on waste sewage? Can you imagine the things that have been abandoned? Can you even imagine if God gives you a special ministry to people who are mentally derailed? Do you know what that may bring in your life? I'm saying that God says, I will make a way in the wilderness. So begin to broaden your mind and allow God to make a way where there seems to be no way. He says that I will cause waters to spring on the desert. In other words, under normal circumstances, you'll find water on the desert. But that is what God is able to do. I speak over this church and I proclaim the God who is able to make impossible things possible. Look, if your womb has been removed and it is like a, uh, a desert, today by prophetic unction, God can cause a creative miracle. And I speak that into your being. God, I am proclaiming to you that change your mind. Nothing is too difficult. Nothing is impossible. And I'm believing God for some mighty breakthrough in this church. Some, about three days ago, I was, I, was, I was lamenting a bit on a few things. I was just wondering, God, why this? Why that? Why? And, and as I kept, in fact, when I just started, God said, my friend, shut up. And stop that prayer. And begin to see the greatness in you. Begin to see my glory, my power, my oil. Begin to see the hand of God upon PIWC. Begin to see men and women who are great. Then I change the prayer and I kato pa kato sta parada ya kato rolobo. At that time, I saw some mommy to praying. I think somehow, when I started babaying, I saw she had also changed her prayer. I said, how ah, can And as I began to pray, I realized that something in the inside is working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Now listen. Change your face. Change, be rebranded. Some of you don't see any good in this church. You don't see any good in your pastor. You don't see any good in the presiding elder. You don't see any good in the elder because he's your husband. Because you know about Chadia Kakrenti. We're not the beginning platform. We're not the elder. So you bring your whole mentality to church. So when God opens your him up to be a blessing. So, you know, change your face. Change your mindset. He's, he's a husband at home. But once he mouths this pulpit. <laughs> once, once he mounts this pulpit, even if he's a wilderness, rivers will begin to flow. Let me say this. God is more powerful than our weaknesses. So, look. Royal verses. Hey, more. More yet. Champion. You are a great team. And more. Let it be said upon you that 
there is a choir in PIWC Kukunimi that when they stand to minister, so all the you are cancelling and you are when you be here, and then you are sacra. Change. The things we say against each other, the negative confessions, the things we say must change. Change the face. Let the face of this church change. Let us begin to appreciate each other. When somebody sits by you, see your God seated by you. Look at somebody by you and say, God. And I open everybody in this church not to be a curse, but to be a blessing. Can you imagine, you know the number of people in this auditorium right now? More than 300, 400, 500. Can you imagine if any of them who greets you becomes a blessing to you? Lift your hands up. May these hands of yours become a blessing wherever you go. May doors be open unto you because, because there is grace upon you. And may your strength be joined with my strength and together let's build a holy glorious church. And I'm saying that your wife, when she comes to stand here, she's not your wife. She is, no matter what, a wilderness that God is causing rivers to flow. And so by authority from today, I release grace upon every service. I release grace upon every life. I release grace upon every business. I release grace upon every marriage. I release grace upon every work. The face of this church must change. He will turn wilderness and all those things and he will cause them to become arable lands. Lands that will be cultivated and will produce. Shall we listen to this statement? As I bring this presentation to an end, I came under a prophetic unction. I came with a changed face, changed mentality. And I'm here to let you know that as long as you are a member of this PIWC, there shall be a change. Areas others cannot go. From today, you will go. I'm not speaking from my bones. I'm speaking from my spirit. Opportunities that were lost will come back. Are we together? The people who did not look at your face will begin to look at your face. Change has taken place. The, the king who would not normally stretch his hand towards you, there's a change over your face now. When I say change your face, I'm not talking about come to church with BS. <laughs> I have changed my face to confirm the message. You see, I'm asking some of my cat. I say, yes, we are being in power. May, on a more serious note, you wonder that how can a church of Pentecost pastor on a lost of a day wear kambu? <laughs> wear kambu. I want you to know that the anointing is not in the suit. The anointing is upon your life. Are we together? You know, now so many There must be a breakthrough upon your life. If we are not careful, we would exchange God with material things. If you are not careful, we, we would exchange God to, as clerical. Yes. Yes. But today I'm, an, I'm here to announce to you that there's oil upon your life. There's grace upon your life. And this morning, may your face change. Amen. There should be glory upon your life. Amen. In fact, I have descended like Moses. Yes. How many of you believe this? I am loaded with oil. I'm loaded with blessings. I'm loaded with favor. I'm loaded with the 
prophetic unction. And you will join your spirit with mine. And the face of this church will change. Those of you who come to church late, change your face. Look into the face of person and say, you, you are late, come and stop. Tell the person, change, change your face. Don't be noted for being a late comer. Look at another person and say, you, you're only Sunday church comer, Catherine. And tell the person, change your face. Don't be known as only Sunday vessel. And then tell the person, for 10 years, you have only 20,000 in your account. For, for 15 years, you cannot even save. You can't eat a rat in And then you know the change. Change, 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 change your bottom, change your face. Ha, I want you to I don't be me who chill with Yeah. When you are chill, then even when your son tells you that the phone has crashed, you begin to scream at the son. And so what? May your face change. And I'm serious about this. 